Welcome to my first e-race here on F124. We're here in Brazil competing in WOR that happened on Sunday night, 7 p.m. Of course, the first round of the championship here as we're in Q2 on our first push lap with a brand new set of soft compound tyres. And this is really where we get into the heart of this competition. As you're gonna see later, at the end of Q2, it is so unbelievably tight this year on this game cycle with the racing and I'm certain F1 Esports will be even closer with the lap times between the drivers, it's going to be nuts. But as you can see, really fighting the rear of the car quite hard on this lap right now, coming across some traffic in the middle sector, that meant I locked up the rear tyres with a little bit of distraction and sort of recovering due to the tyre temperature. Because of that, the black box that you can see over the screen right now is quite simply only there for qualifying and that is to hide and protect the data that we're using for our battery deployment here on F124 as over qualifying. It is very important to have the perfect battery strategy and to not be sharing amongst other people is really important. That black box is gone for the race, so you'll see all of my ERS during the race stint, uh, but just not during qualifying. Our first lap put us up into P8, and now we're starting our final lap here in Q2. Fresh at the tyres, of course, down out of the first centre S. As you can see, we're gaining a little bit of time already comparing to Delta, so it's been a nice, smooth first sector coming into Turn 4. We're going to slightly miss our apex, ever so slightly, just costing ourselves quarter, half attempt at maximum there as we go into the middle sector and fighting the rear of the car all the way up the hill. Hit the brakes, down the gears, down into third, let the car rotate into the middle of the road, throw it into the left, pick up the rotation, pick up the traction, hard back on the power, half attempt gained. Now down the gears, down into third, pick up a nice apex there, nice rotation and an even better traction. Now down the hill into the left hander, ending the second sector split. We went purple in the middle sector and you see out of the final apex, a little bit of a wobble, a little bit of a traction loss, running up to start finish line. You can see we're going to be 0.74, 7, 7, 6, 8 and we're just losing a little bit of time on the start finish line and we sneak in to the 6.4 but ultimately that is not going to be enough to be putting us through into Q3 so we're going to be starting P11 for this race but as I mentioned earlier half a tenth between the top 10 yep. it's crazy it's absolutely crazy with the lap times and how close it is but yep. getting straight okay, into the race I actually have a glitch with my yep. webcam with my audio you can see my webcam is stuttering is stuck right now and my audio was like fluttering and going on and off on and off you're going to hear me and say about it now my audio is broken you hear me say about it in the background, I'm having my audio broken, I'll talk about it a bit more in a second, as we're looking round the outside of Frederick Rasmussen, deep on the brakes now, leave space on the outside, just touching wheels a little bit, now in the slipstream. Uh, Seb, I have this glitch where, like, my audio is, like, crackling quite a lot. Do you know a fix? So you can see, and here, me speaking to my engineer, as I go up the inside of Tom Matley and Sand, with just not enough space to make the overtake happen. So yeah, I don't really know what happened, to be honest, with the audio. You can see the webcam is stuck at the moment as well. Um, so it's a really strange situation that is happening right now, and I think it's PC-related and not game-related, uh, because it also is coinciding and linking with the webcam. Uh, with the audio problems I have, you can see looking around the outside of the top, but nothing happening as Xander and Ta Tamas getting wheel to wheel, elbow to elbow, up ahead of us. So you're going to see every kind of sneak and opportunity while those guys are fighting hard. Out of the final corner here, you can see Tom is looking around the outside of Tamas as well. And we're not using too much of my battery just yet. And we're going to sort of play a bit more of the long game and try to fake them out. As they turn off their battery, we're going to turn on our battery again down the inside of turn one. DRS has now been enabled. Keep it nice and composed on the apex. We're not going to go around the outside of Tom there. Bit silly to try and make the move around the outside of there on lap two of a 36 lap race. Now DRS wide open, using a bit of the battery. Tom's going to squeeze us to the inside, but we're having none of that. Deep on the brakes, tight to the inside, and now we get the move done up into P8. So even with the audio issues, even with the Ooh, PC I'm issues, my webcam pros apparently. We're up into P8 from starting P11 in this race here today. Tamas is up next, flashing with his battery and is on the hard compound tyres. So we've got to make the time count where our tyres are good. 
and now you can see coming on to lap three and if you look at the bottom right hand side of the screen my webcam is magically gonna fix itself um, and my audio issues now were resolved so from this point onwards you can see I actually have a little look over to see my second monitor because I was surprised that the audio had fixed itself well, back. Um, now for the rest of the race I don't have any technical issues so it's all good to go and well, audio issues seem to fix itself so you can hear me even saying that my issues seem to have fixed themselves so now it's all good to go all set to push for the rest of the race and now speaking of that in the slipstream in the DRS of Tamas and moving ourselves up into P7 with the fastest lap of the race so far with an 8.66 what, uh, 8.665, uh, I should be saying. Predicted and it is going to be raining later in this race, so we're going to be playing a lot of strategy with trying to manage these tyres until the end of the stint, until the rain's going to be hitting around lap 22, lap 23 of this race. Purple first sector, so we're absolutely flying right now, using the battery, squeezing up the inside of our teammate right on the white line, and just able to be opportunistic and get the move done into P6. So, six laps here in the Brazil race, and we're already up into P6 in this race. Looking for the switch, but down the inside, Nicholas Longe. Can we make it P5? Now running side by side, but again, we're going to back out of that and not go around the outside and not put ourselves in a position to be pushed onto the grass and braking zone. So that's a lot what racing is about. Like, the same happened with Tom uh, Manley on lap two, at the start of lap two, I should say that you can fight these things, you can put your car in the position, but ultimately it's also my responsibility to not put myself in those dangerous positions, for sure. The other person might get a penalty, sure, they might be at fault and I might be the innocent bystander, but it is ultimately still my race that I need to look after and putting myself in risky and dangerous positions is not positive and not productive for my own race anyway. So that being said here, you can see that I'm recharging my battery quite a bit right now and letting the cars ahead scrap. I know that we need to save the tires. I know that there's gonna be a bit of a long stint now. So now that I've worked my way up into P6 in this race, uh, it's gonna be about time to manage these tires and manage the situations around me as much as possible. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be an interesting situation because the cars ahead of me are on the hard compound tyres, so unless it's a bit of a sealed, signed and delivered move, there's not really too much point fighting them massively too hard, because they're going to have better tyres than me by the time it's going to rain anyway. I'm more focused on trying to fight the people on the same compound tyres as me. It's from Putin on the head. battery. Helping P4 is on the medium compound tyres as I ask for the battery information of Yano and we are going to try and That'd sneak nice. past Yano on the straight. He sees that coming. He's using his battery. We can't go really outside of Yano here because Pookie is there and it just sort of blocks our path, blocks our way and we're not able to get that move done. Looking for superior traction out of the center essence though right on the back of Yano and we're going to start using our battery one more time and try sneak up the inside of him as he starts to save his deployment down the inside. But yeah, nothing quite doing there so he left us a space good fair racing good racing between me and Yano anyway uh, but nothing quite able to sneak up the inside there and now it's time to start saving that battery one more time so yeah we saw an opportunity we tried to take the opportunity but it didn't quite work out in our favor and we are still in P6 cars have started to peel off what into the pit box the two Mercedes who are on the same strategy as us with the medium compound tires have decided to box ahead of this rain stint okay. as well as Otis is now boxed as well so we are up into P3 after starting P11 in this race only 16 laps into this race as well and it's looking very handy for us at this point in time so goal and objective at this point in the race is try to keep up with Yano and Nicholas as well and save my tyres as much as possible and extend this stint until the rain comes and we can swap the intermediate tyres. We are pulling a gap away from P5, P6 downwards in this range. You can see me doing a little weave basically to say to Nicholas, say to Yano, look, I'm chilling, I'm here, I'm on a different set of tyres than you, I'm not looking to fight you guys right now, I'm looking to manage my tyres, manage my race and put myself in as strong position going forward as possible rather than pointlessly fighting on a set of tyres that are worse than them in this time yep. in the race and this stint as well. 
With that being said though, even though we are going even like six, seven laps further than the other medium runners did, we're still able to hang on to the back of Yano and Nicholas quite relatively comfortable, uh, considering yep. that we're able to have a lot of times yep. 100 percent battery deployment in the middle sector Definitely. and deploy it down the pitch. Uh, now I need to focus um because I've not done wet from this game. Outside of Korean post. You can hear me say it. I've um, actually not done wet outside yeah, this game. Yeah, just let me know crossovers uh, and in this game outside blah, 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 of Korean post. Um, I, I wasn't probably might call it late with planning uh, to do the bracing on this game, to be honest. Um, of course. Some situations happen. I trust your input. Um, so, uh, yeah, some situations happen yeah. behind the scenes. And I went from basically focusing a lot just on content and not yep. planning to do the bracing on this game. And within the space of three days, then having to get ready to do this race. Uh, so it was quite a tight turnaround. Um, and literally the furthest I've ever gone in online races prior to um, the day before when I did a full race stint around Brazil with Xander, my teammate in this race, um, was five laps in open lobbies. Apart from that, the furthest I've ever gone was in career mode doing my team. Um, so I had never experienced um, the rain conditions in an online race, especially against other competitive people, and I didn't even have a wet setup. I didn't even practice wet conditions for this track. In hindsight, could have been quite good to do a few laps in the rain anyway, but of course hindsight is always fantastic. Um, but ultimately, yeah, so this is a lot of learning and adapting on the fly on how to manage the tyres, how to manage the situation the situation as now we come on into lap 23 here and it is going to be time to box on this lap. They definitely and closed on me. You can hear me saying that uh, some people definitely closed on Xander and that's sort of the Freddy and the train behind him imminently um, as they box a few laps earlier to go on the intermediate tyres. Um, so yeah, you can see we're able just to hang on to the back of Nicholas and Yano as now we're deploying a lot of the battery coming up the hill and we are going to be boxing for the intermediate tyres on this lap, keeping the car nicely within the white line for the pet entry and you can see closing up the gap actually to Nicholas in the braking zone. Bit of a tyre whisperer this stint. And uh, yeah, that was a very nice stint. I was very proud of that stint to sort of jump in and move up so many positions and extend the um, medium mate. tire life so far into the race while retaining good pace and of course being helped and aided by the oh, no, no, no. very powerful slipstream right, within the F124 game, but still able to hold on to the back of Nicholas and hold on to the back of Yano on a worse set of tyres in that situation was still something that was very positive and had a massive influence on our race, meaning that when we have got to this point, we are now effectively third on the road in this race and we can start building up right now. My mentality at this point, to be honest, is simply just settle in. I don't need to do anything crazy. I don't need to be doing something stupid. I don't need to be over pushing because like I say, I've not experienced the intermediate conditions on the equal cars on F124 and in a competitive race as well so I'm really just building into it as I actually am closing a little bit into Nicholas but I make a very slight misjudgment and a very slight error dipping my left hand tyres onto the uh, grass in the braking zone costing myself about seven tenths uh, gap to uh, Nicholas and to Yano up ahead I also got told uh, pretty imminently after this as well that the track is not fully dry, uh, not fully wet I should say, and will not be staying fully wet for a long time. So my predicted rear tyre wear was extremely high and was something that I was managing throughout the stint of this race. You can see Nicholas and Yano are doing a fantastic pace at the moment. They're really flying, using a, probably a little bit more battery as well, but ultimately they're doing a fantastic driving, uh, so credit to them. And at the moment, I'm having to look behind me for Frederick Rasmussen, as you can see, as we're now coming up to the back markers of Istan Puki and Jake Benham and Zander? Otis as well, who have stayed out on the dry compound tyres. Back markers are hard work for that. I don't mean it in a negative way, but I mean because they're not in the same race as us right now, as we look up the inside of Istan Puki, get the move done. And now we have Jake up ahead as well, who we're gonna go round the uh, outside of. You can see just, Jake did a really respectful thing. He really did not take the race in line. Um, so thank 
thank you to Jake for that, just for being respectful. Uh, but yeah, we lost a lot of time in this situation, getting caught up behind cars, going around the outside of Otis again, who was very respectful about it, because he could have opened the car, went wide, and uh, but he didn't. He was very respectful about it, so uh, that was nice. That yeah, was I'm nice going to let them do their own thing um, but yeah, we're now we're trying to settle in, ourselves. and basically, yeah. as I was saying, my rear tyre wear was going to be extremely high because the Look intermediate the part the of the race is not going to be that long. So the tyres are going to be dealing with a sub-optimal track that is too dry for the intermediate tyres for the majority of this stint. And now you can see on lap 29, DRS has been disabled, of course, but it's still not that dry, uh, still not that wet as... Freddy Rasmussen goes up the inside of us. You can see it's not really that wet of a track at the moment. DRS is disabled, but it just doesn't visually look that wet. And you can't see it, of course, but uh, my tires were really hot at this point in the race. And I'm really trying to manage them as much as possible. So I still have some meat. I still have some traction on the tires that I'm not in puncture territory as we go on into the final lap of the race. You can see now it's starting to get a bit more wet on the track and you see the water pellet showering the surface of the road as we're starting lap 30 here and you see Frederick Rasmussen three tenths behind us. Yeah, I won't be at the bottom of the sand. Uh, had Xander who was about one and a half, two seconds behind us in P6 and uh, Yano and Nicholas were gone. Yano and Nicholas were gone in this yeah, race. So gone. now I start focusing behind me to try and bring Xander into this race as well and try to hold up Frederick and Tom Manley as well and try just to bring uh, the opportunity for Xander to move up a few positions up behind us as well. Of course, it's going to be difficult because Frederick, Tom are so top class drivers and uh, yeah, they're not going to make it easy and it's going to be a really difficult situation as Frederick is now looking around the outside, hard on the brake deep around the outside and yeah round of course because that was a really classy move from Frederick as well you can see now Tom is right up behind us and we're gonna have to be defending from him as he looks down the inside but nothing quite doing there but yeah that was a really classy move especially watching the back from Freddie there going around the outside nice and cleanly start on lap 33 we're coming back at him look down the inside of the brakes we're not really an option to send it down the inside there just simply because we angled the corner and we were too far behind end of lap 33 you can see the track is drying one more time and you can see we are all over the back of frederick and we're going around the outside of him and um, now starting lap 34 hard on the brakes and is this full now, dry now you can hear me asking it's going to be full dry and my engineer is saying it's mostly dry right now and we're going to be again in a situation of managing the rear okay, tyres so they're we not going to be melting on the final yeah. lap the DRS has now been re-enabled in this race so it's going to be a very tactical ready. battle between me and Frederick Rasmussen who can it, man. take this final spot on the podium with only a handful of laps to go here in Brazil second to last lap lap 35 now you can see Frederick goes up the inside we have a good amount of battery saved up right now and I have a plan I have a strategy and I have a thought process that I want to nail and we are going to be opening the DRS here right up behind Frederick Rasmussen we decide not to go for it so I can see and you can see that the rear tires of Frederick are absolutely worn down to, to slips basically and you can see his rear tyres are not gripping anywhere in this middle sector. So I'm very confident of my pace on this final lap going on into lap 36, what will of course be the final lap of the race. So I'm very confident in my pace in the middle sector because I have managed my rear tyres a lot and visually my car is sliding much less than Frederick. So I believe and I feel confident that I can find a little bit more pace out of my rear tyres on this final lap due to the management that I've done. You can see Frederick again sliding around on the final apex and we're underneath three temps already coming out of the corner. So we decide to go past him on this straight and we're going to leave him the opportunity to re-overtake us on the next straight because I feel confident that either I can hold the position into the middle sector and extend the gap away or I can re-overtake him with a DRS going up to the start finish line so I feel really confident in this situation you can see we're playing with our battery a little bit turning it off seeing if Freddy wants to go side by side with us we squeeze him to the outside he just closes the line a little bit push us on the grass and you can wow. see wow yeah um, last Freddy yeah Cheers, mate. um <laughs> 
<laughs> my reaction of pure sarcasm there. Um, yeah, basically, Frederick uh, also apologized for this uh, privately, so it's all good. It's just racing stuff happens. Basically, yeah, just didn't quite anticipate for the car whip on the outside of the track. So we touched wheels, and the momentum pushed me onto the grass. And of course, with the grass, with the wet tires, and the and the lack of traction, meant for the car to slide and oversteer, and that cost me the position to Tom. But I felt so confident that Frederick was going to get a penalty. So all I had to do was get this position back off Tom, and then we'll be back in the post in paying positions once post-race penalties were applied and we're all over the back of Tom right now using the battery using the DRS and going around the outside we're able to re-overtake him okay we should get the podium back the start fuck line. yeah if that's not a penalty yeah ah uh, fuck yeah you can hear I'm quite happy with that uh, because yeah, that was a really good race. I really enjoyed that race and you can see at the end of the race We did get the fastest lap as well So once post-race penalties are applied I should have a podium paying position and the extra fastest lap award point as well So really cracking race really enjoyed that and I will be catching you for the next league racing video of PSGL round one on Wednesday at the live stream Glad to see you. Ciao. Ciao. Bye. Bye